The demonstration flight of the Boeing 707 at the International Airline Convention in Seattle in 1955 was anything but dull. Boeing had invested an enormous sum on the development of the 707, which they claimed would shrink the world by a factor of two. Known as a bit of a maverick, the pilot Tex Johnson decided he would do his utmost to sell the revolutionary aircraft by performing a Shondell over Lake Washington. In June 2008, the Royal Australian Air Force ceased operations with the Boeing 707, 25 years after this majestic jet flew its first operational sortie. After a prestigious career in commercial air travel, the 707 has proved itself a great asset to the Australian Defence Force. And for those who served on this Queen of the Skies, the last flight was a sad farewell. But as we enter a new era in refuelling and airlift capability, no one will forget the great contribution the 70 has provided to Australia's air power. Formed in 1942 in Townsville, with four Empire flying boats, the squadron performed with great courage against the Japanese advance south during the Second World War. The squadron went on to fly a variety of types, including the Anson, Tiger Moth, Dakota and DH-84 Dragon. The aircraft behind me is serial number A20624, otherwise known as Richmond Town. It was one of the first two Boeing 707s in the Australian inventory and it will be on the 30th of June this year, the last of the Australian Air Force 707s to be retired from service. The blue tail design with the dragon in uh, large form was designed by the maintenance personnel to commemorate the passing of the 707. Dragon is in fact the call sign that the 707 uses during air refuelling operations. We're about to depart on a sortie for uh, exercise Grumpy Cobra. Grumpy Cobra is uh, designed for 3 and 77 squadrons to obtain some specific objectives. The mission that we're flying today has 10 aircraft from both Red and Blue Air coming up from Williamtown and refuelling off the tanker prior to uh, going off and executing their missions. Time hack. Three, two, one, hack. Long-term forecast is favouring runway 10 with about 10 knot easterly. However, at the moment they're calling it uh, variable winds and off runway 2A. There'll be a two ship, they're red air. We're seeing them at 0405. They're expecting uh, top offs of up to 4,000 pounds each. The Air Force selected the FA-18 Hornet as a replacement for the Mirage fighter in 1987. The history between 33 Squadron and the fighter wing has been distinguished by many successful missions. On this mission, they're polishing their refueling skills prior to an attack on a maritime target. Purchased initially for the VIP role, the aircraft capability of the 707 would go on to present 33 Squadron with unique challenges throughout the 80s and 90s. Aside from flying Prime Ministers, visiting heads of state and Governors General, the aircraft had the honour of carrying Pope John Paul II and the Australian Air Force became the first foreign Air Force to carry the Queen and Royal Family. But its greatest honour would be to carry Australian troops into battle. They had scheduled services to Europe three or four times a year. They cut them back and they became scheduled services to Washington DC. During the election tours we'd have two jets running, one with the Prime Minister and one with the Leader of the Opposition. Um, they both pretty much demanded the same. VIPs, I mean, you couldn't go down the back, so you know, there's was being front end, you were stuck up the front, you know, very being rarely could being you go down. Being a you were stuck down the so back. So you were stuck down the back with the press. You saw we nothing stuck but up, the press. We're stuck right. up the front with the PM and their staff. 7 is actually quite a difficult aircraft to land well and certainly it's difficult to land it consistently well. So everyone has what we call a bad landing some of the time. So you will find that even the experienced guys occasionally will bring it in and you don't end up with the best result. But landing you can walk away from is always a good landing. 
Radar 1, request connect right hose. Radar 2, request multiple drive plugs left hose. Radar 1, connect contact right hose. 2, you are clear multiple drive plugs left hose. In 1989, Australians found themselves stranded by the airline pilot strike, and the 707, alongside other airlift group aircraft, would take part in Operation Immune, the federal government's response to the strike. Our support during the airline pilot strike in, in the late 80s, uh, where normally in our assistance we provide to government and the civil community, our C-130s and caribous are out there doing flood relief, famine relief, it might be those sorts of things. But in this case, as well as those aircraft, the 7 provided a, a sterling effort during that, uh, that support to bring home, in the main, stranded Australians who are on holidays in other parts of Australia. The unions didn't, uh, didn't like us, so they considered us as uh, strike breakers. So every time we landed at a civil airfield, they wouldn't refuel us. So every time we took off, we would, we would make sure we had enough fuel to do the actual task by landing at military bases. On the 707 we have two description roles, load master basically we look after all the uh, load handling, administration and management of the aircraft, basically any cargo, passenger handling that goes on and off the jet and then we have a dual role that we've just done today which is basically air to air refuelling. Dragon is Bra, 3-0, 5 in tow. Contact. Like many of our allies, the Air Force understood the importance of the 707 conversion to the air-to-air -air refuelling role. The proposal would see four 33 Squadron 707s fitted with air-to-air refuelling pods on each wing, containing a hose and drogue refuelling system compatible with the FA-18 Hornet. Contact 2-3, uh, contact Dragon, Hose Primary Yellow 1 this time. Cover push 19, slow 3 -2. When they get to their minimum fuel reserves, they can come to the tanker, refuel and, uh, and join the, rejoin the fight. So I guess from the enemy's perspective, it can appear that, uh, that there are a lot more fighters out there than, than really exist, hence the term force multiplier. It's a notoriously difficult aircraft to tank behind. The hoses are short, uh, they're close to the, uh, to the aircraft. Um, they're also uh, close to the, uh, the, the jet wash and the uh, wingtip vortices and that means it's a difficult job for the fighter pilots and sometimes they get it wrong. We had some interesting flights uh, initially, uh, certainly the first couple of plugs the, uh, it was a tendency for the hose to uh, walk around the nose of the F-18 um, and knocking off their, their angle of attack probes which uh, would then uh, uh, unfortunately fall down in their engine intake so uh, so we had a few, uh, few mishaps there until we found out that the Americans had discovered this problem a long time beforehand and they had uh, chains on all their AOA probes. This is one of two air-to-air -air refuelling pods fitted to the aircraft. It is largely a mechanical system. Located in this pod is a, a very large hose and drogue assembly that's driven by this propeller up at the front. And uh, it's a fuel hydraulic system as opposed to a hydraulic system using the onboard fuel as its driving motivator. 